Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. My name's Dan. I'm here on the island of Bohol in the Philippines and uh, got some odds and ends to show you, some bushcraft stuff. Um, and some non-bushcraft stuff I was just going to show you. Let's see, the first thing is I've got a couple pieces of chert. Look at that, isn't that cool? The chert's almost as good as flint. And I should have brought down my, my strike. I could throw some sparks for you, just for the fun of it. Um, this was given to me. Was this? Here, here's here's a good one here. A guy so nice from Texas, a guy named Mike, sent me about 10 pieces of chert all the way to the Philippines. It cost him like 70, 80 dollars to send a little box of stuff. He also sent a, a pair of of camouflage shoes and a whole bunch of other neat stuff. Well, he gave me uh, a Mora. Uh, HD and a more classic my first more as I ever had in my life wonderful wonderful guy I appreciate everything he's done this is a fantastic but the chert is awesome because uh, there's nothing like that here in the Philippines that I found so far and uh, I don't know if it'll, it'll take a spark from this old mall here I don't know No, but it will. It will with my, with my uh, flint striker thing. All right, another thing. <laughs> I, I got this in. I got this in a towel, so I don't get it wet. This is something. This is nothing to do with bushcraft. This is just something you can do when you're sitting around with nothing to do. This is a a polished clay ball called Doro Dango. It's a hobby for kids and people in Japan. And what this is, is just our regular clay here out of our yard. Made a ball out of it and just worked it back and forth, back and forth. Kept drying it off and, and uh, until it got, this is just polished like glass. Took about two days to do it. I don't know, this silly little pastime. Okay, here's something that, that I really like. Now, I make spoons. Uh, my best ones are the just mixing spoons. Now these were made before I had a, a curved knife, so it was almost impossible to, to make any kind of a depression in them. So these are just basically just mixing spoons. Um, I gave the first one that I made to my mom back in Florida. I sent it to her. And I think I sent one to my sister, but other than that, I just make them and throw them in a box. I really don't use them much, but I think this think they're cool to look at. But this is just an ordinary mixing spoon. Here's here's a this I call this one my fighting spoon. This spoon right here. Now you can carry a spoon like this anywhere you want. You can probably carry this spoon on a plane, but you put this spoon in your hand like this. That turns this side here into a a great upper cup cut weapon or a hammer fist weapon and you hit somebody with this side here it won't go through you won't drop it out of your hands because it, it gets bigger here it sticks in your hand now I've tested these on things like banana trees the stock of banana trees which is very similar to your texture of your body and it just this just tears up just tears apart the banana but doesn't doesn't hurt your hand even the slightest little bit I call I call these invisible weapons but a spoon someone says why do you got that well, it's a spoon. I use it to eat. I can't eat with plastic or metal. I have to eat with a, with a wooden spoon. That's what you need to tell somebody. And there's no reason you shouldn't be able to take it anywhere you want. Anywhere in the world, it's a spoon. With scrap pieces of wood, I made little spoons. And some of them I make the depression to a certain size, just like a teaspoon or a tablespoon or whatever. Here's a big, a big mixing spoon here, kind of almost like a ladle spoon, like for soup and that. Made out of a little different piece of wood, but it's all the same type of wood. It's a tugus. It's our hardest wood here. I like to make them out of green wood. They're a little easier to carve. This one here, now this one here, I had a. This is the first, the first spoon that I made after I got a, I made a, a curved knife out of an old blade. But I wanted to decorate this with some coal rosing someday. I never got around to it. 
There's another little cute little sm small one. Um, it'd be good enough to eat a little bit. You, you, you know, not wide enough or big enough to get a very good um, um, mouthful. It's just kind of small. And here's another one here that didn't turn out very good. It's kind of real thin and flat. This is actually more of an eating spoon. Um, when you when you take take it to your mouth, take take one of your other spoons to your mouth, and you'll see how thin they have to be, like a metal spoon, where you use like a spoon like this one right here. It's 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 just it's too thick. It's just too thick. And then to get the to get the spoons thin enough that they don't split or break, that's that's where it it, it comes into an art. Now I didn't use any power tools on these at all, but what I did use was I used a rasp to make the handles round and stuff like that. And uh, I've tried I've tried carving them from beginning to end, and, and <laughs> they usually turn out pretty bad, <laughs> pretty bad. They don't they don't look in like this. These are these are actually little little show pieces though. They're actually fabulous fabulous quality. Another thing you can do, and this is just screwing around, is make things out of antlers and tips this is a this is a tip off of a moose antler this is a tip off of a white-tailed deer antler this is a little chunk here that I polished up on a buffer back in Iowa and it's gonna carve on it someday or make something out of it but again something like that just fits in your hand marvelously and stiffens your hands up here's a little necklace that I made but it actually goes to a point where again, you could put that you could put that in your hand if you had to, and you know that that might that might save your life someday, you know. But it's around your neck as a necklace. Would anybody say anything about it as a necklace? I don't know. I don't think so. On a plane, maybe they might say something because it's pointy. And if I was going to carry this on a plane, I would make sure that I'd make another one, and I would have it so it's more rounded on the tip, so it wasn't pointy at all. So then it's just it's just a, a symbol around your neck or whatever you want to call it, and you know you tell them it's a religious thing. It's, just, it's part of my religion. They have to let you wear a necklace. But then again, all you gotta do is is put it between your fingers, and something like that turns into an awesome little weapon. It's my my video is turning into weapons. Uh, let's 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 keep going on that on that weapons trick here. So, have you guys ever seen these before? This is called a stinger. Wicked, wicked little tool. Um, I found these on on eBay. I think I think I got like five of them for I have five of them for like ten bucks or something like that. And usually they're the real ones are like ten bucks a piece. They're made by some special, some fancy colonel that invented them. But you just take those and you put that in between your fingers. It sits in your hand like this. You don't even the best ones are black. You know, so you can't couldn't even see it at night or anything like that. And you can. A little ring on you can make it your keychain so you got it with you no matter what now this thing right here if you punch somebody with that that little tip right there you hit them in the in the temple you're gonna kill them um, I did a little research on them. I had I watched a lot of interviews and, and a lot of people like uh, bouncers keep them and they don't use them for punching what they'll do is they'll put them in their hand and somebody's being a jerk they'll get a hold of them and they'll, they'll take it and press it in their arm or press it the best best spot is right behind your jaw. Press it right behind your jaw. You don't hit nobody. Just press it behind the jaw, and I guarantee you, whoever's there is going to give up in about a sixteenth of a second, because that that hurts. Pressure points are wicked. But this is just a cool little piece of plastic that you can have in your pocket with you wherever you're at on your on your keys. Um, this is urban survival, guys. Urban survival. Something as simple as. You see the little massagers that you have. Now I guarantee you, there's no reason why you couldn't carry this onto a plane in your bag. And if somebody says something about what's this for, it's a massager. I, I have lower back problems, this and that. But put this in your hand. Put the knob between your fingers. It, turn, it turns this into a wicked weapon. Or you could put it your hand this way. Let's see, it would be easier way. You also could hammer hammer strikes down on it, but it's extremely hard plastic, and there's no reason why something like that couldn't be carried with you wherever you go. And again, this is a totally 
what's the good word, innocuous piece of equipment. This is for pressure points when you're massaging yourself. You tell them you have bad hamstrings, whatever, you need to you need to keep blood flowing in them. You got di I got diabetes, whatever, and you need to keep blood flowing in your in your joints. They can't not let you have that. Another good weapon, so you know we're talking about weapons, would be I make I make these. This is just a, a box end wrench. And this side's always bent on its own. And I just I cut off the open end and then I put a 90 degree bend on it. Now that right there in my hand makes my hand solid as a brick. If I struck down with it, I've got a piece of metal protecting my hand, and if I struck up with it, like in the chin or something like that, I got a piece of metal there. And if I made the mistake of punching somebody, at least my hand would be solid and you know, you wouldn't break your knuckles or anything like that as, as, as easily. But this is just a little small one. I put a, a little wrap around it, just a whipping around it for grip. Here's a little bigger one. This is probably, this would be my favorite one if I had to actually use a weapon. It has a nice big right angle on the bottom to completely, completely protect your hand and the top part is wicked. The problem with some of these though is that that's why, again, why I made this one right here, the smaller one, is these, this is, this is probably, what, I don't know, a cup, three, four or five ounces, I don't know. It's pretty heavy, it's a wrench. And you think having something heavier in your hand would make you stronger, but actually it slows you down. And you're better off having something small and stiff in your hand. That's why I made the smaller ones, was just exactly for that. Because this, this weighs absolutely nothing, and it does the same thing. Stiffens your hands, gives you something to hit with and protect your hand with, but it doesn't slow you down in, even in the slightest. And there's no reason you can't have that in your car. It's a wrench, right? It's a funny shape wrench, but it's a wrench. And on this one, on this bigger one, if you can see here, you can see here on the, I put a fancy, um, I, I call it a half inch decor, or half hitch decoration down the side of it. it wraps all around like a, like, a, like a coil, see? Looks pretty cool, it gives you a good grip, very nice. Now here's, here's a good one here too now, here's a, Here's one. There's no reason why you can't carry this anywhere. This is a wrench, right? It's a bent wrench. Anybody ask you what it's for? Well, it's, it's for getting on that one bolt that you, you can't reach with the wrench in any other direction except for having it bent. Now, if you're carrying this around with you in a club, well, that, it's not going to work very good for you. But having it to be able to just pick it up and have something in your hand, Again, to I would I would put this one I would probably put with the flat end on the top on my hand, and the bottom with the open end because I wouldn't want to hit somebody with the open end in the face or something like that. It would just it would just tear you apart. Probably could kill you because of the, because of the points on there. But it is it is just a wrench, you know. Hidden weapons, guys. Hidden weapons. Um, the last thing I have is exercise. You guys ever see these things here? These balls with a, a ball inside of it, you, you wrap a string around the inside of it and just give it a pull, and it's like a gyroscope. And I, I'm not going to start it up for you, but when you get when you get it spinning, all you get to do is keep twisting your hand a little bit, and, and it keeps the keeps the gyro going. And that fighting of the gyro fighting back at you will just rip up your your forearms. You know, it's an absolutely fantastic. Um, tool. This one's called Powerball. Life lies in movement. But it's a really cool exercise thing. I've seen them on Amazon and different places. Uh, I think this originally came from the Sharper Image if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I've had I've had this for, I don't know, 20 years maybe, something like that. But it's fantastic. It, it's just, just another way to, when you're sitting there watching TV, sit there, twist your Twist your wrist, and it just keep, it keeps going. Once you get it started, the, this is the second. This is this might be the second one I had. The other one I had was a, had a little tacky. This one's real plasticky inside. You need a thing. The other one I had, I could just put it on a piece of carpet and just stroke it, and it would start spinning. 
That was my first one. I think the first one was a little different color too. But this one works great. It makes a little humming noise as you're doing it, but it's not, it's not bad at all. So that's the little bit of odds and ends. Um, last two things, obviously, Altoids tin, fantastic thing to have. Everybody knows that. Here's a funny little thing I found. Um, I can't remember what was, in the, what was inside of it. It was like a, a scoop or something for the kitchen. But I thought that was pretty cool looking. I, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut this end off about here. And there's probably just a little bit of a hole here. I'm going to fill that with epoxy. And then it's just another little little thing you just keep in your hand if you wanted to where you're walking around. Now, here, here's one other thing. I mean, let me say about this kind of stuff here now. Let's say you're carrying this with you. And you have it in your pocket or whatever. Or, or the stinger. Or even, even something as simple as the fighting spoon with you. Okay. Let's say you're carrying this stuff with you. One, one of these things with you. Now, if you take this out and attack somebody and beat them up with it, this is a deadly weapon. You're going you're gonna to get screwed. This is a deadly weapon. Spoon can be considered a deadly weapon if you're attacking someone with it. But if you're attacked, and in today's times, with what this non nonsense is going on around everywhere, if you're attacked and you have to defend yourself, Anything you can get your hands on to defend yourself is fair game. A pencil, a pencil in the eye, whatever it takes to get away. Um, with the way the law, with the way the the things are going, it might not even help you anymore nowadays. You're probably going to get screwed in court because you'll be you'll be prejudiced or something for uh, defending yourself now. But as a rule for defense, anything goes. In the Philippines here. I'm not allowed to carry a pocket knife, but I can walk around with an 18-inch bolo in town, no questions asked. I can walk into a department store with my 18-inch bolo, I just have to check it with my bags, you know, no questions asked. I can walk into a police station with my 18-inch bolo, but if I have a pocket knife in my pocket, that, that's like a serious crime here. I've asked, I've asked the police here about things like this, and... They, they, they've never seen it before. They don't, they don't understand what I'm doing, why it would happen with me. And I said, it's just to defend myself. And then they said, well, attack. No, I said, no, not attack. Defend. My, 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 my philosophy is, is defend yourself and your family and get away. You know, so if, if some thug's coming at you, if some thug's coming out with a knife, this isn't going to do you a whole lot of good. It's, try to get away from them. If you've got a gun, you, they're going to shoot you. But if somebody just attacks you, some thug, you pull this out of your pocket, defend yourself, hit them a couple times with it, knock them out, what are you going to do? Boot them in the face, and then walk away. You know, get, get out of there. Don't stand around there and beat them to death. Just, you know, get your, get your family out of there. That, that's, my, see, that's my biggest worry when I'm in the city. Like in Cebu City, there's, there's 20 million people over there. And, you know, 19 million of them, 19 million, 500,000 of them are poor. They don't have jobs. They don't have anything. Are they going to attack you and, and, and kill you? No. No. 99% of the people are, are wonderful people. The Filipinos are great. But you, you run into those other people, the drug addicts, the people that are desperate, whatever, they'll attack you for your, your chain on your neck or your, your wristwatch or whatever. And that, seeing that we're like, man, I'm from another country. They think they think we just our, our pockets are full of money. They don't realize I'm poor. I'm poorer than they are. You know, I'm lucky to have you know a meal every day. My my wife and daughter eat every day. They eat three meals a day. I eat one meal a day. Sometimes two meals a day. And when times are, are bad, I miss meals. Sometimes I sometimes I don't eat for days. I went one time after an earthquake that I didn't I didn't get to eat anything for 12 days. To make sure my family had food, we couldn't go anywhere to get anything. We were, we were locked down, almost like a, almost like this quarantine stuff. There was just nowhere to go because everything was destroyed from the, the earthquake. Um, but you do, you do what you have to do for your family. But like I say, when I go to the city, I guess I just got <laughs> sidetracked. When I go to the city with my family, we look like we're. Uh, a victim wrapped up in, in a bowl because I can't I can't it's very hard to defend me and my family if say three guys came at me in Cebu City and I was with my family I, 
sure maybe I can stop one or two of them, but the other one, one of them is going to grab hold of my wife, put a knife up to her neck, and, and yeah, I'm going to kill her, give me your money, whatever. You know, what are you going to do? If I'm by myself, I got a much better chance. I feel I feel much more comfortable when I go to, when I go to the city with my wife, and it makes her makes makes her furious. Is I always take either I make a before I go I'll make a cane, like it's just a, a staff, a waist high staff, and I'll, I'll tie a fancy knot around the top of it to make it look like a regular cane, and I'll take that with me when we're walking around the city, whatever, because I can take that into the malls, I can go anywhere with that. I just take that with me for just a little added protection. Another thing I'll take sometimes is. Oh, say, I'm say I'm carrying a, a bag with me, I'll take a piece of bamboo or a stick about 18 inches long and I'll carry that in my hand as I'm hanging on to the handle of the, the bag. And just just seeing that stick, no one, no one approaches you or anything like that. I've never had any real problems here. I, I, I was a, someone tried to steal my bag one time in the city, uh, in Tog Balearan City on our island, our capital city. And uh, that, was back, that was back when I first got here. And I, you know, I, I, I weigh, I weigh 280 to 290 pounds since the day I got here. I haven't gone up, up or down weight by a pound or two, but I've lost a lot of muscle here since I've been here. But when I first got here, I was, I was huge, and 43 years old. I remember I was standing at a stoplight, a crossing thing, in front of a McDonald's. Two policemen leaning against the McDonald's, 10 feet away from me. Some drug guy come running up alongside me. I just got caught him out of the corner of my eye. I had a, had a, a shoulder bag on, actually around my neck. He grabbed he grabbed hold of my bag and took off running. I just took a step and grabbed hold of the the, the strap and he had a death grip on it. He just he was running full blast when he ran out of cord. He just went flying up in the air, fell straight on the ground. And then I looked over at the cops and they're just like, <laughs> they, they didn't even smile. They're just like, wow, look at that didn't do anything so then the guy wouldn't let go of my bag wouldn't let go of, I'm pulling trying to pull it out of his hands he's about half unconscious but wouldn't let go of it and I look over at the cops I'm like I'm like I'm like you know like hey how about this they did they wouldn't they wouldn't get off of a lean off of the, the wall so I just I just took a step over I, I just booted the guy in the face he let go of my bag I walked across the street in the crosswalk walked over to my motorcycle and I, I, I drove home you know, it's just like, wow, this is this is bizarre. I can't I can't believe this place. This this was back in about 2005, 2006, something like that. And it was to me, it was it shook me up a little bit. But uh, you need to always be prepared. And I'm going way off track on this video here, but you always need to be prepared, no matter where you're at, what you're doing. You should always have something with you. Even even something as simple as one of those tactical pens. That's a perfect thing to carry with you. Carry a tactical pen with you. It's a pen. No one can say a word about it. But when it comes comes to the point where someone's actually close enough to you that they're going to hit you or whatever, you grab your pen and shove it up their chin or whatever you're going to do with it, that'll end the conflict and you can walk away. And, you know, come back another day. So that's all I got for you. Uh, please click like and subscribe. You can contact me anytime at Blind Owl Outdoors. Uh, go outside, have some fun, be safe. Watch out for this crap that's going on back home. I mean, you guys are seeing it all on TV just like we are. Um, I, I'd be in the country. I'd be staying in the country. I wouldn't be going anywhere near a city for me. But uh, be safe, guys.